Welcome back, folks. It's your boy, Editor Matt here. And today I wanna show you the biggest hack that I use every single day. If you're a filmmaker, you probably got one of these guys kicking around. This is a H4N. I bought mine on uh, Kijiji or Facebook for like 150 bucks Canadian, which is like nothing. Actually, you know who I bought this off? Chris Howe. Yep, he sold it to me on Facebook. And I didn't even need it at the time. I was just like, that's really good price. I'm gonna use that one day. And look at me now, I'm using it every single day. If you're a filmmaker, you probably have an XLR mic that you use for your productions. And you've thought, wow, how cool would that be to plug that into my computer? Or maybe you wanna start a podcast and you wanted to use your nice microphone. Well, I learned that you can use this to plug your XLR mic into your computer. That's nuts. But the best part, check this out. The biggest problem with H4Ns, no batteries. That's right, no batteries required. Just plop her on the desk, plug her in, you're good to go. Also, phantom power. If you were to get like a XLR USB adapter, you're probably gonna spend $40 on something that doesn't work if you require phantom power. The best part about this is I can go on Discord and flex on my friends for having the best sounding microphone. Yo, how's my mic sound? Same. Yeah, good. Yeah, fine. Cool. I've looked into other XLR interfaces and they can range anywhere from $50 to like $400 to $1,000 if you want a really good one. But this way, a lot of people got these things kicking around anyways, especially if you're a filmmaker and it's a pretty useful hack. So let me show you how this works. Oh, also on top of that, I have the headphone output running into the camera right now. So I can also use this as an A box. If you've looked into A boxes, they are incredibly overpriced. Let me show you how to do this. So first we're going to grab our handy H4N recorder and we're going to plug our XLR mic into the bottom and then we're going to grab our USB cable, plug her into the side and this will take a good hot minute for this thing to boot up. We're going to select our audio interface and then hit connect. I just leave the frequency on the default. I don't, I'm not even going to pretend I know what changing it would do, but this will take a total of two hot minutes to boot up now. Once we're up, we'll see some audio waveforms. Uh, we just want to make sure we select our mic input. Now you should again see audio waveforms. If you don't, you want to hit the menu button, go down to phantom power and just make sure you have it enabled or disabled depending on if your mic requires it. Now, another thing should be noted, uh, you cannot record when it is in this mode. Uh, so none of these buttons do anything. All you can do is run your microphone into your computer. The only setting you can change is your microphone input. Uh, so let's hop over to the computer and we'll get that set up. So you just wanna open up your sound settings, head over to recording and make sure you got the H4N selected and set that as your default. I know we're all home stuck in social isolation. So a good microphone is gonna be valuable for all of us. That being said, let's check out some alternatives. I'm just gonna put this down for a second. Ooh, that was loud. This is what a gaming headset microphone sounds like. You can tell it's a little bit lower quality for sure. This would be like your entry level quality microphone. Uh, let's move on to a different mic. So this is the Blue Yeti. This is a pretty common microphone for people who want to upgrade their audio quality and get something a little bit nicer. Uh, these go for $130. US. I apologize if there's any noise. I actually lost the base for this. Usually it's sitting on a table base. I guess if you didn't have an XLR mic, well, I don't really know why you're watching this video. This could be a good option for you, but this video is more if you have an XLR mic and you have an H4N, you can plug them together and use them on your computer. All right, back on the XLR mic, there's a quick comparison. Uh, I was just listening back to the Yeti and actually I don't really think you can hear much of a difference other than my awful hand movements. I wouldn't recommend holding a microphone like this. I'd probably put it in a mic stand. But anyways, thanks for watching. I hope that this little hack helps you out in your microphone quality. I've seen a few videos out there showing this, but not too many high quality ones. So I thought I'd share it. But anyways, I'm interested if you guys have any cool tricks like this one, feel free to add those in the comments below. I would love to read them. That being said, I'm gonna wrap up this video. It's a short one. Just thought I'd want to throw this one out there. And uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe, hit that like button if this helped you out. Cool. Bye.